Now, this is a huge part of Senator Bernie Sanders platform in the race for president. Matt Gregory is here to explain just how Sanders plans to forgive one point six trillion dollars in debt. I mean, obviously, it's going to take money and it's going to come from taxes. But yesterday we had the big announcement by Senator Sanders on his plan to erase student debt and several other candidates have also unveiled their proposals. So who's his best? Look for yourself. Student loan debt has reached an all-time high. Current and former college students owe around $1.6 trillion. And the only debt bill higher for Americans right now is mortgage debt. And it's not going down. Consider this. In 1998, the average in-state college cost around $3,000. Now the average cost is $10,000. Private schools in 1998 cost around $16,000, and 20 years later, it's more like $43,000. Well, so far, three of the Democratic candidates have released comprehensive plans to deal with the crisis. Take former HUD Secretary Julian Castro. He won't make students pay for debt after college until their salary reaches 250% of the federal poverty lines. That's roughly $30,000 in most states. And then you never pay more than 10% of your monthly income. After 240 months or 20 years of payments, the debt is forgiven. Senator Elizabeth Warren has her own plan, and it's more like a math problem. It forgives $50,000 of debt immediately for students, making less than $100,000 after college. But for every $3 you make above $100,000, it takes away $1 of forgiveness. Easiest example, if you can't follow the problem, is if you made $160,000, it would only forgive $30,000. Then just released on Monday, Bernie Sanders' plan, part of the College for All Act, it immediately forgives debt for 45 million students. That's all $1.6 trillion wiped away and paid for by a tax on Wall Street. Now, economists haven't really weighed in on the ramifications of what each plan would be, but you can bet after Wednesday and Thursday night's debates, they will. Reese, back to you.